The Honourable Member for Launceston. Thank you, Mr President. Mr President, today I speak about the incredible Hazara community in Launceston and the vibrant, wonderful people who are part of it. I recently wrote an opinion editorial for The Examiner about this issue, and I think the importance of it bears repeating in this place. We've all been touched in the past weeks and months by the tragedies which have unfolded in Afghanistan. Following the withdrawal of American military forces, the Taliban swiftly took over in a matter of weeks, undoing many of the social and political advances that had been made in the past two decades. Very few of us were not touched to see images of families attempting to flee from Hamid Karzai Airport, crammed into or clinging from airplanes, and Afghans just handing their children over to any soldiers who could take them. Heartbreaking doesn't even begin to describe the desperation that these people must be feeling. Going back decades, one of the most oppressed groups in Afghanistan are the Hazaras, who hail from Hazarajat in the mountainous region of central Afghanistan. The Hazaras comprise the third largest ethnic group in Afghanistan, with an estimated 9 million Hazaras out of the approximately 33 million strong population of the country. Since 2001, a significant number of Hazara Afghans now call Launceston home. Over 50 families who have been granted humanitarian visas live, work and go to school here. This wonderful, vibrant and close-knit community has obviously been significantly affected by the developments in Afghanistan. The rights that many of us here take for granted, the freedom to assemble, to free speech, to education, health care and justice, are now not available to many Afghans, Hazaras in particular. The president of Launceston's Hazara Association, Yusuf Mama Hamadi, has a grandmother in Afghanistan in an area that's under Taliban control. Yusuf's family, who fled Afghanistan when he and his brother Yasin were very young, know what life is like under Taliban rule. People's hands were cut off in the street as a form of cruel, retributive justice, often for crimes that were committed as acts of desperation and caused by the inhumane policies of the Taliban to begin with. Yusuf and Yasin's family made their way through Afghanistan and Pakistan to eventually receive some semblance of safety in Iran. Eventually, the family was resettled to Tasmania through the United Nations High Commission for Refugees Resettlement Program and were able to experience a life of safety and security for the first time. Able to learn English, go to school, and do normal teenage things like joining a soccer team became a reality. Whilst extraordinary stories like these are not uncommon amongst the Hazara community in Launceston, people like Hossein Mosini also has family who remain in Taliban-controlled Afghanistan and believes that any time he talks to a family member at home, it could be the last time. Unreliable communications infrastructure combined with the types of uncertainty and cruelty that characterise Taliban rule causes a great deal of distress for Hossein and many other members of the Hazara community in Launceston. Seeing how the Hazara community in Launceston has grown over the past few years has been inspiring, with an active Facebook page, community events held in the city and a Hazara market in Elizabeth Street, which provides a little taste of home. In early September, I joined with the Hazara community, my local, state and federal colleagues and other Launcestonians to stand in solidarity and show support to those who are suffering and in need of support in Afghanistan. To see the effect of Taliban policies on those suffering has been absolutely heartbreaking. For the Hazara families that now call Launceston home, each one has a story. Each family still has ties to Afghanistan and are connected through their shared beliefs, customs, adversities and triumphs. We are very lucky to have them as part of our community and we're made stronger and richer for them being here with us. Mr President, I'm sure I stand with everyone in the community who supports Hazara Afghans and along with my local, state and federal counterparts commit to doing whatever I can to welcome them and alleviate their suffering here and at home.